bolt to go in. That is the equity in the world. Puts the pad and it should be used. Um, let's take a little now then crew Andy mechanic here and welcome to my YouTube channel now this is going to be a really short video another one in the series of using the Pico scope for diagnostic purposes and on the hoist behind me I've got one of my bikes and I'm just busy preparing it ready for a, a ride down to the South Island but if you've watched any of the previous videos you'll know all about that um, TPS Yes, I know you can test it with a multimeter, you can test the voltage output, you can test the resistance, you can test all sorts of stuff. But, and of course you can use the manufacturer's you know, diagnostic tools as well. But, nothing really beats an oscilloscope for accuracy and for picking up minor deviations um, in the voltage output as you roll open that throttle and then roll it closed again. You can, you know, you can really analyze that signal extremely well. If you use a, a multimeter set on volts, it's never conclusive. It's a little bit ambiguous. It's not very accurate. And if you've got a picoscope or an oscilloscope, then hey, why not use it? Because it doesn't take very long to set up, and it gives you conclusive evidence that that uh, TPS is not as it should be. And don't forget, as that tract opens up inside, and there's a few videos on TPS that I've done already in the past, before I had a picoscope, um, as that uh, the, the little arm tracks across on the variable resistor, the strip inside, you know, its, it's resistance is either increasing or decreasing, depending on, on what kind of TPS it is. But if there's a bit of dirt as it's going across, or a bit of wear, then the resistance is suddenly going to glitch, just momentarily, and that can be enough to, to cause a bit of surging or a misfire when you're driving the vehicle, you know, sudden sort of, you know, lull in performance. Because uh, the ECU really it thinks that the throttle is in a different position to what it really is. And it changes the fueling and the ignition to suit momentarily. And that's not good. Customers do complain. And you may not always pick up that problem just from using a normal multimeter. Okay, so without further ado, we'll head over to the bike. I'll show you which, uh, on this particular bike, which wire it is, the signal wire from the TPS into the ECU. We'll rig up the, uh, the picoscope and we'll take a waveform. Here we go. Okay, so on this particular bike, this is the ECU, and it normally lives just down here. I've taken it off its little mount and stuck it up with a zip tie up on the frame, just to make it a lot easier to get to with the camera, and of course for connecting the, uh, the oscilloscope to the, the lead wire. Now, the TPS wire is the pure yellow wire. There's no stripe, it's just yellow, and it's this one here. And what we need to do is to back probe that. So I'm going to use a pin, if you can see that, there we are, look. I'm going to use a pin and just very very carefully my terrible eyesight I'm just going to ease that pin past the little rubber sheath there we are look right that's all the way in now and that's now going to be touching the metal contact down the bottom so we can use that to pick up our signal now if you back probe at the ECU and you get a good waveform excellent if you get a bad waveform um, or you, you know, it's, it's not what you expect, then you could always do it at the actual sensor itself. And if you get a good one at the sensor and a bad one at the ECU, then you know there's a problem with your wiring harness. It's quite a simple way of doing it. Okay, now with the Picoscope, you get these little clips here, look, and they've got like a little claw on the end. Really, really cool and perfect for doing exactly this job, which is, of course, what they're designed for. If I could actually see what I was doing, I'd be doing better. There we go, look. Right, so we've captured that uh, that little pin now on the end of there. This is our ground, so that can go onto the battery negative. And now, I've just got to plug in the picoscope. Okay, so we're going to be using uh, channel A, so we'll just plug in the USB first. And then channel A, pop that in there, give it a twizzle. And that's it. Right, round to the laptop. Okay, so to start the PicoScope program, you just click on the icon. It takes a few seconds to boot up. And then we need to set the parameters for our TPS. Now we know the TPS gives out approximately 0 0.5 to 
4.5 volts as the throttle opens up. Now we always get this static at the start, so we're going to choose voltage, uh, plus or minus 5 volts. We can actually just move that down a bit because we're not going to go below zero. There we go, that'll work. That's currently on zero volts, and 5 volts is at the top here. Now, as regards time base, we want two seconds per division, so it's nice and slow. We've got full screen on there. Right, I'll go and well, we'll just turn that off for a second because it always starts straight away. Okay, I'll go and turn the bike on and we'll take a reading. Okay, so our baseline voltage is about 0.5. Excellent. Okay, so I'm just going to very, very slowly roll the throttle open. I'm just going to wait for it to start a new screen. There we go. Look, very, very slowly rolling the throttle open. Use the whole screen for for this operation. There we go. Look. And it should flatline. There we go. So we're at maximum throttle now. And we'll just hold it there for a second just to make sure that that stays dead level. We'll hold it for a whole screen, I think. And then, because we can also see glitches on there as well. And then on the next screen, we'll start to roll the throttle back down again. And again, really, really slow. I mean, the slower the better, to be honest. Right, so we're bringing it down. And it should be a nice, even line coming down. Obviously, it depends on how good you are at rotating the throttle slowly and evenly. There we go, let's go to the next screen now. And then back down to zero. Now, there's no point in doing this, you know, whacking it right open and closed, open and closed, because it's just not going to test the tract properly inside that uh, TPS unit. You've got to do it really slowly to pick up the faults, the glitches, so to speak. Because it's those glitches that can cause the flat spots while you're riding. Let's open again. There we go, we've topped out. Wait for a new screen. Holding it wide open at the moment. And then, bringing it back down nice and slow. All the way back to fully closed. So we're about half throttle at the moment, heading down. There we go, all the way down, perfect. Turn the bike off. So you don't need the engine running for this. And then we can stop recording. Perfect. So what did we get? Well, let's go back a little bit. There we go. So that was me messing around, showing you what not to do. And this is the throttle being opened. As you can see here, look, we're starting down here. Zero throttle. And if we want to take a voltage, we click on there. Look at that. 508 millivolts. So just over 0.5 of a volt. And if we want to zoom in, we can do. And we can just look at all the little... I mean, you're going to get some little glitches like that. But what you're looking for on the screen, basically... Come down, there we go, look is I'm opening the throttle at the moment, there should be nothing, there should be no dropouts, there should be nothing dropping down like this, and there certainly shouldn't be any peaks either. So it should be a nice, even line, a nice smooth line going all the way up. And that's what you're looking for. This is the throttle topped out, so again, if there are any, any glitches, you might see it drop down to zero volts, so it might just drop down to you know, two or three volts, but it's nice, nice steady line, that's a good TPS. And so it should be. It's a good bike, not any problems at all yet. And again, now I'm closing the throttle really slowly, and we're looking again for any kind of dropouts, any sort of point where this graph suddenly plummets in voltage and then bounces back up to continue the line. That again will be a sign of a, a bad TPS. So don't do this, that's what not to do. It doesn't show you anything other than the closed voltage and the open voltage, really. And maximum voltage, just out of interest, is. 4.394 volts. Look at that. 
4.342 so it's just you know accurate enough is that isn't it pretty good and then we can go across and we did the whole thing again I did it a bit quicker this time around but you can see again it's just a nice continuous line all the way up flat line at full throttle come back we now look and again there's your descent coming down we can actually close that little window if you want so there's your descent coming down and again it, there's no dropouts that is a good TPS excellent right back to the bench oh you can save this actually if you want so you can click on file save as and we'll just call it a throttle oh can't spell cool done typer right okay back to the bench so there you go I think that was a reasonably short video you can tell me in the comments really useful um, little test there now obviously it's well beneath uh, an oscilloscope testing a TPS unit it's a bit of overkill to be honest but if you've got one and you saw how quick it was to set up why not use it because then you've got a conclusive evidence as to whether that the TPS sensor is faulty or good your call and you have to make the call as a mechanic don't you that's what it's all about Okay, well, uh, I'll put a link in the description of where you can buy those Picoscopes from here in New Zealand. Uh, there are Picoscope agents all over the world. Just Google it. There's bound to be somebody close by, and I'm sure they'll do you a good deal. But don't forget, the software, one of the key elements is the software to work that Picoscope is free. You can have a look at the software. You can download it without even buying a Picoscope. You could download some of Eric O's uh, off YouTube. Eric O's got a YouTube channel, which is South Main Auto. You could download from there some waveforms that he's um, saved for you. And you can have a play around the Picoscope software before you even decide to buy. No, I'm not a salesman. I don't get anything out of this, believe me. It's just me sharing my knowledge and well, what little there is left and how useful these Picoscopes really are. And man, you know, they're a hell of a lot cheaper than the, than the oscilloscopes you used to buy 10, 20 years ago. They were crazy expensive. Now, it's affordable for most people. Definitely a good addition to the workshop and can save you, save your skin, to be honest. Um, okay, so if you like, enjoy the video, then why not click on the subscribe button? Uh, you'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon and then you can tick the box to turn on notifications if you want. And our friends down at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. But if you wouldn't mind, first point of contact through the comments on YouTube because that's where the videos are and in all honesty that's where people look at the answers and the questions and see if I've already answered you know their question to be honest and if I haven't then maybe a viewer is going to chip in and help out because it's all about collaboration you know I'm just the catalyst I'm just the guy that makes the videos for you and I do enjoy it as long as you enjoy it I'll keep enjoying it okay crew well until next time thanks for watching cheers over and out <laughs>